I want to give a quick update on how to install the full force seeker unit on your trolling motor so that you can uh, use your forward facing sonar and simple design, put it in place, um, four bolt system, power cable, done. This is the most practical, fastest, easiest system that you can use for your forward facing sonar out there. All right, so here's the foot pedal right here. And we've already assembled the power cable on the foot pedal to the power source inside the dash because we had a, a breaker box that we used on this boat here. So we already have the power cable hooked up, which screws in. Just get it connected to a positive negative system. We're gonna run it out. Comes on to the foot pedal, as you can see right here. Uh, has uh, pins to guide it, line it up, screw it in. And then you can always figure out where you wanna place it in the boat. We haven't mounted this yet. And then we have the power cable that goes to the unit itself. All right, so I put the bearing on, um, uh, which goes on, it's kind of tight, but it goes on the shaft of the trolling motor. So therefore, when we put our brace to hold the shaft of the seeker unit so that it'll allow it to, in travel mode, and take on impacts of forward, like in current, if sticks come on, it'll allow the shaft to have uh, rigid strength and everything, and also for travel to go on. And then we need to take these screws off and then put this on here. So now we're gonna put this so this allows this to spin freely inside the brace. So now I'm gonna put this on as such, as you can see right here. And got a little washer. And then that just screws right in. As you can see right here, this allows free throw. So when the troll motor turns, this bearing will turn inside here as the shaft stays in, in, in position. All right, so now we're gonna put this on, on the unit itself. So as you can see, you have your bolt alignments, and I realize there's a kickstand there. So we're gonna pause for a second, and I gotta take this. All right, so we got the kickstand off, so technically um, we moved it to the other side, where it probably should have been in the first place. And as you can see here, you have the support shaft, and you have this, and so you get four, you have four bolts, okay? And they go, you just kind of feed them in. And as you're going in here. Okay, so we got this on here. Um, these are uh, our cable ties, so we'll put these on when it comes time. Get those off for right now. And, and so we make the shaft longer. So if you have a longer trolling motor, now in this case, this is a 45 inch shaft trolling motor. And you can see here where the blade would hit if, if we have. So we're gonna have to cut a little bit of it off, probably roughly about right there. If your trolling motor's in the water about right here when you're out there fishing anyways. So people say, what if I have to raise the trolling motor? Well, we're gonna give you a longer length and so if you ever have to really fish water, you're, all you gotta do is just move your transducer up and down so that if you're in shallower water, you can only pull your trolling motor up so high anyways. So we'll cut it about right here, but we'll have a coating, which is right here, that heat shrink that goes on this tube. And I give you three of them. So it insulates any vibrations that you may have so the heat shrinks on and gets on tight. So we'll probably cut it right about here. Heat shrink it here. So you either have your puck here or you could have your transducer up here. But your trolling motor won't hit it. It only hits your transducer. So if you ever have to raise your transducer, you can raise it in the length that you have here, either here or here. But this is probably where you'll be 90% of the time anyways. So cut off a little bit. Depends on length of the trolling motor shaft. This is why we have it like that. I'll put on my power cable right now of the uh, seeker unit. I'm gonna screw it on real quick. And I'm gonna test it to make sure everything works on the unit. So what we're gonna do is now that we got all of our power cables in here and everything, we wanna test to make sure it works. And so we have a, on this, as you can see on the pointer, can you see that up there? Yep. So 
we can we have a variable speed foot dial so we allow here to speed control the turning radius of the seeker unit when i look i'm gonna take a pipe cutter and i'm gonna put it on here and then and i believe when i see we're up got a little bit of height here we're good so if we ever come up any higher we have a couple inch variance. So I'm gonna say there's our, our cutting angle right about right there. So we're gonna cut about four or five inches off this pipe. So. This is better than a hacksaw, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> and if you ever bend or uh, Bend a pipe or shaft or anything else, it's simple replacement. It's a T-pin setup. You remove this, you plug in the, I mean, I'm sorry, you remove the top, you plug in the new one, push it through, back to normal again, cut it down, and uh, it comes with whatever you need to fix. So now we have what we need, what we got here. So we're going to heat shrink on the shrink tube. And as you can see, I'll heat, reheat one on, and the shrink will go on. As you can see, it's shrinking down. Okay, so I have the uh, two pieces wrapped on, so I'm going to go with the full three on here. And this will act as good insulation, good setup. As you see, it's shrinking on there. So when you end up doing everything, Okay, so now we're putting so now we're putting the uh, transducer for the life scope unit on right now onto here as you can see has a nice setup fit everything goes even and uh, it'll fit real nice real nice now I have this on here but it's not completely tight but I want to make sure I line up with my trans my pointer. So what we need to do is, um, I need to adjust this real quick. And so, so now you want to make sure you line your pointer up with your transducer, of course. So that's the pointer. And this does glow in the dark. You don't need a lighted one. And just tighten your stuff down and you're back to square goes. As you can see right here, the trolling motor blade will not touch this transducer. So. It's up high enough, and so if you ever have to adjust it and you ever need more height, you can always raise it higher or lower. So that's why you get a longer piece. So that if you want it up here, you can have it up here. So as you can see, nothing's gonna touch. Okay, now we have the transducer on, and now we're gonna put on our cable ties. We're just gonna snap. Now these will rotate and flex, so so you understand that this is a it'll turn and turn and turn and turn. You know, you gotta make sure you line, you don't wrap your cables up but this gives you forgiveness if you accidentally turn it too far because these will will twist with you for a little ways so I always leave a little slack so that you don't make a mistake and then put another one on up here and then you have your slack and then you'll follow your your troll motor cable down to clean up all your excess all right, so now that we're all finished with everything to tidy up the job you want to lock this bearing into place. Now what I do is I take electrical tape and, I, and I'll start at the bottom and, uh, and, I'll, and, I'll, and what I'll do is I'll go around and around until I create enough of a bump so that this doesn't migrate and travel. So it allows the bearing to spin and move, but I just only go around maybe, I don't know, six, seven times and then I got a bump and that will never migrate forward and then I do the top the same way so so when you're driving up a bumpy lake it doesn't migrate up the shaft so and you always want the shaft somewhere within the first 14 inches or so about here not past your foot that that holds your shaft of your trolling motor you want to just do that and now this will never migrate up and down and you're done we got all the foot pedals in Everything's working. Everything's smooth. Smooth as a goose. Everything's where it's supposed to be. Got all the tables put away. Mounted. Done. 
And if you ever had to move or replace, all you gotta do is unscrew the power cable, take that off, or unscrew the, the cable to the uh, seeker unit. Pretty simple, basic installation, don't need much. Thank you guys, AccuCold.com.